Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Crow Pi L, a Raspberry Pi 4 based laptop by Elecro that's essentially a slimmed down and slightly more refined version of the popular Crow Pi 2. They've taken some of the community feedback on the Crow Pi 2 on board in producing this laptop, so it's got some nice upgrades, like the inclusion of an internal 5000mAh battery, which should power the laptop for up to 3 hours, and also a simplified way to install and remove the Raspberry Pi. The Crow Pi L comes with a couple of options. First up there are two versions, the basic kit which includes just the laptop, and then the advanced kit which includes the laptop and Crowtail starter kit. It's also available with a black or white keyboard, and you can select it with an optional 4GB or 8GB Raspberry Pi. For the price difference, I'd probably look at getting the Raspberry Pi elsewhere. I'd also really like to see a slimmed down version for the Pi Compute Module 4, but until these are readily available again, it's probably not viable for them. You can then also select your plug type at the bottom. Let's get it unboxed and see what's included. First up we've got the Crow Pi L. Alongside it is a white wireless mouse to match the laptop. Then some hardware to mount the Raspberry Pi within the laptop, and then this little adapter board. They call this the Crowtail adapter board, and you basically use this in conjunction with the Crowtail starter kit to tinker with adding sensors and electronics to your Pi. At the top we've got the power adapter. This has a USB-C connector, but it says that it's 12 volts, so I'm assuming it's a USB-C power delivery adapter. Although it doesn't say that anywhere, and it doesn't have any specs for the other lower voltages, so I'm not too sure. I'd probably be cautious plugging this into a standard USB-C device. Taking a look around the Crow Pi L, we've got an 11.6 inch IPS display, with a webcam and microphone above it. We've also got a nice full size keyboard, along with a power button and trackpad above that. I'm not sure why they've put the trackpad in this spot. It seems a bit odd to me, but at least it gives you a way to use the pointer if you can't use a regular mouse or don't want to carry it around. Alongside the trackpad is a GPIO pinout diagram. On the left side are the Pi's ports, so we've got an Ethernet port, two USB 3 ports and one USB 2 port. The second USB 2 port on the Pi is used by the Crow Pi L, presumably for the trackpad and keyboard input, as well as maybe the webcam. On the opposite side is a compact GPIO header, a 3.5mm audio port, an HDMI port, and then the USB-C power port. The GPIO header is not the same size as the one on the Pi. It is a more compact version that the Crowtail adapter board will plug into. On the back we've got two speakers for stereo audio and some ventilation holes in the middle. On the bottom we've got two removable covers. The larger one that is held in place with some screws covers the battery compartment, and the smaller one at the top is where we'll install our Pi. This is just held in place magnetically, to make removal of the Pi much easier, something that the community asked for on the Crow Pi 2. The adapters are all designed for a Raspberry Pi 4, and you can use a 2GB, 4GB or 8GB variant. Let's take a look at the battery. It looks like it's two lithium ion cells making up a 7.4V pack with a total capacity of 5000mAh. To install our Raspberry Pi, we need to plug this adapter board into the ports on the side, and then the smaller one into the top USB port. It connects to the larger adapter with the little ribbon cable. We've then also got this really cool microSD card adapter. This allows you to insert microSD cards into the slots on both sides, and you can then use the switch to choose which one to boot from. So you can dual boot your Pi really easily without having to swap cards. The whole assembly then connects to the Crow Pi L through this ribbon cable. The Pi is held in place magnetically, so we need to add these screws onto the bottom for the magnets to attach to. Lastly, we fit this adapter onto the top to direct the Pi's GPIO opens through to the port on the side of the Crow Pi for the Crowtail adapter board. It's also got a fan on it to provide cooling to the CPU. That's our Pi installed and ready to be used. 
They've done really well with the design here. It's one of the neatest and most functional I've seen. Usually you need to connect a number of loose cables between the Pi and laptop or tablet, so this is a really clean setup. Now let's get it booted up. The first thing I noticed is that the display is really good. A lot of these sorts of products take shortcuts on the display to keep the cost down. They definitely haven't done so with this one. This is running Elecro's version of Raspberry Pi OS, so they've included some nice features that are specific to the Crow Pi L, like this battery monitor in the bar at the top. This shows you the remaining battery capacity in quarters and indicates whether the battery is charging or being used. The trackpad isn't all that great. It's usable, but you probably wouldn't want to use it as your go-to device. You also can't really rest your wrist while you're using it, or you'll push buttons on the keyboard. Performance-wise, you're going to get the exact same performance you'd get out of a standalone Pi. This is effectively just an all-in-one package for the Raspberry Pi, so it's not going to give you any better or worse performance than the Pi would by itself. Now you're probably wondering why you'd spend around $350 for this laptop once you've added your Pi, when you could get a second-hand or low-end laptop with better performance for a similar price. The biggest benefit I see is that this is a really good learning platform. It comes with Pi Panel pre-installed, and this guides you through a number of projects step by step, with all the software really well explained as well. You can start out with drag and drop block coding, and then move on to Python once you get more comfortable. To get the most out of this functionality, you'll probably want to get the Crotel starter kit, or another 4-wire sensor kit, so that you've got some basic electronic components to work with. The Crotel starter kit comes with 22 modules, as well as some breadboard jumpers and 4-pin cables. Each module has a plug-in interface that you can use an included cable to connect to the Crotel board, so it's all plug-and-play which is great for beginners. The kit also includes a base shield, which you can use directly on your Raspberry Pi's GPO pins if you aren't using the Crow Pi laptop. It's basically the same sort of adapter as the Crotel, but to be used straight on your Raspberry Pi. As a beginner, it can be quite intimidating to open up a box of electronics and have to figure out how to connect them while also learning how to code the software. This package makes the first step a lot more manageable, with the modules all being plug and play, so you can progressively work on more and more advanced projects. Let's try one of the projects out. I'm going to try and connect an ultrasonic sensor and display to the Pi, and we'll use Let's Code to drag and drop the program. The lesson takes you through each step, from what you need to how they work, and then from the connections to the program. They even give you an example program at the end of the lesson. Let's see if I've got this right now. So yeah, that's all working the way it should, and the whole program was just drag and drop. I didn't have to install any additional packages, libraries, or drivers to get this working. They also have similar lessons for Python as well. These are obviously a bit more involved and are great for learning the basics of Python programming too. When installing the Pi, we saw that we could boot from either microSD card, so I'll show you how easy it is to switch to a different operating system. We just shut down the Pi, open up the magnetic cover, flip the switch over to the second microSD card, and then turn it back on again. This is a really cool dual boot system that I haven't seen implemented on a Pi before. Getting back to the power adapter, if I plug it into my USB tester, it immediately comes up as being 12 volts. So I'm almost certain that this isn't a power delivery adapter, and it'll likely fry any non-power delivery electronics you plug it into. So that's something to be cautious with. Generally, if you plug a power delivery adapter into this tester, it defaults to 5 volts, because this meter doesn't have power delivery circuitry to request a higher voltage. Overall, I think this is a really great product. The design is well thought out, and the display they've used is excellent. I would have liked to have seen some internal support for an SSD, maybe through one of the USB 3 ports. 
The trackpad is also in a bit of an odd place, but that's about it. I don't really have any other complaints about it. It feels like it's good quality, it runs well, and the effort they've put into making this into an education platform rather than just a laptop, I think makes it well worth the price tag. Let me know what you think of the Crowpile in the comments section, or if there's anything you'd like to see me try out on it. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.